Hello everybody, welcome to this new video from Guidancy Education Channel. We will see the topic that is discussed. We are continuing Class 11 Physics, Chapter 12, Thermodynamics. Under that, we are going to take up Heat Capacity, Capital S, Specific Heat Capacity, Small S, Molar Specific Heat Capacity, Capital C, for Solids. We will also see the derivation of C is equal to 3R for Solid. This video will be of great use to you. So watch the video completely without skipping and if you think the video is useful, do like the video, share the video and also leave your feedbacks as comments in the comment box below. If you are watching without subscribing my channel, do subscribe it now and support me. And also press the bell button and all button for notification of new videos. Thank you very much. I remind you subscriptions are totally free. Also, do not forget to see the description box where I give a few important questions. Thank you very much. Come, let us see the topic. We will discuss heat capacity capital S, specific heat capacity small s and molar specific heat capacity capital C. Why should we understand these topics? As per the first law of thermodynamics, we know when a certain amount of heat is supplied to a system, the system utilizes that heat energy to increase its internal energy and also do work. Different systems may have different substances and different substances have different capacities to absorb heat. So, unless we know this property of the substance present in the system, we cannot supply the correct amount of heat energy so that the required work can be performed. In thermodynamics, the scale of temperature is absolute scale and the unit is Kelvin, symbol being K. First one, heat capacity capital S is the quantity of heat required to raise the temperature of a substance through 1 K. Please note that no definite amount of the substance is mentioned here. Any amount may be considered. It may be 5 kilos, it may be 10 kilos, it may be 100 kilos or for that any amount. The quantity of heat required to raise the temperature of that quantity of substance through 1 K that is what is considered that becomes the heat capacity of that quantity of the substance. How is this quantity determined? The substance is provided with or supplied with a certain amount of heat that is delta Q and the increase in temperature is noted. Let the rise in temperature be equal to delta T. Then heat capacity S is equal to delta Q divided by delta T. That will give the amount of heat required to raise the temperature through 1K. So from this you can understand using this quantity we cannot compare the heat capacities of different substances because there is no unification of mass there. So, a more precise term was used that is specific heat capacity represented by the small letter S. You should be very careful while representing this symbol. This is small S. You should not confuse this with the symbol for heat capacity which is capital S. Okay. As per definition, it is the quantity of heat required to raise the temperature of 1 kilogram of the substance through 1K. So, the amount of the substance is specified here. In SI unit, the unit of mass is kilogram. In CGS system, the definition can be the quantity of heat required to raise the temperature of 1 gram of the substance through 1 degree Celsius. But we follow SI system. Therefore, we have to remember this definition. That is heat required to raise the temperature of 1 kilogram of substance through 1 K. What is the relation between heat capacity capital S and specific heat capacity small s? Heat capacity S is for the given mass. Let the mass be equal to M. Then specific heat capacity small s is equal to heat capacity capital S divided by mass M. 
or we may say delta q divided by delta t into 1 by m. Why this 1 by m? This m has to be in the denominator. We have to consider only 1 kilogram. I hope this is clear. Remember this. Okay. What is the unit of heat capacity? What is the unit of heat capacity? Heat is energy. So it is joule. Mass is not considered there. Only temperature is considered. So joule per K. That is the unit for heat capacity. When we come to specific heat capacity, it becomes joule per kilogram per K. This is the unit of specific heat capacity. I hope it is clear. Now, the third one. Molar specific heat capacity, capital C. It is the quantity of heat required to raise the temperature of one mole of the substance. Here mass is not given in kilogram but in moles. One mole of the substance through 1K. So a certain number of moles of the substance is taken. It is heated. Certain amount of heat is given and the rise in temperature is noted. So just as we said in the case of heat capacity delta Q divided by delta T into 1 by number of moles. The symbol used for number of moles is mu. So we get for 1 mole. So the unit becomes joule per mole per K. The symbol for the unit mole is MOL. Okay. So this is very simple. It is not at all difficult. Remember this. So the formula for calculating heat capacity, specific heat capacity and molar specific heat capacity are given here. Okay. We will continue with molar specific heat capacity. We have to discuss molar specific heat capacity of solids, molar specific heat capacity of water and molar specific heat capacity of gases in this chapter. First, we will take up molar specific heat capacity of solid. There is one derivation there. Molar specific heat capacity of solid C is equal to 3R. R is universal gas constant. We will see the derivation of this expression. Molar specific heat capacity of solids C is equal to 3R. We know molar specific heat capacity is related to delta Q. But here, before we derive this expression, we have to find the relation of molar specific heat capacity with the delta U. We need to know a few facts in order to be able to do this derivation. Let us first see the point law of equipartition. The law states that for a system in thermal equilibrium, on the average, an equal amount of energy will be associated with each degree of freedom. What does this mean? In a system, a thermodynamic system may contain a solid, liquid or a gas. You already know that particles in a solid, liquid or a gas are in constant motion. But the type of motion present in these three different physical states is different. That is, particles in the different physical states have different degrees of freedom of motion. Here, our topic is solids. So, we will discuss about the degrees of freedom for solids. Each particle in the solid state shows vibratory or oscillatory motion. They cannot show translational motion. They cannot move from one location to another. So, it shows only vibratory or oscillatory motion along the three coordinates x, y and z. Considering the possibility of vibration along these three coordinates or three axes, we say in solids particles have three degrees of freedom of motion. Okay. So, the energy of the particle will be due to these three degrees of freedom of motion. Kinetic energy due to oscillation of one mole of particles in one dimension is a constant Kb into T the temperature. I will just explain what is Kb but before that for three dimension that is for three degrees of freedom of motion the kinetic energy will be equal to 3 Kbt that is kinetic energy in one dimension multiplied by 3. 
Now, what is KB? KB is a constant called Boltzmann constant. That is equal to PV divided by NA. That is Avogadro number. The number of particles present in one mole of the substance into 1 by T. I have written it like this here. Okay. But we know PV is equal to NRT. But here we are considering one mole of the substance. So we are considering the number of particles. So we write PV is equal to NART. So substituting for PV, 3 kBT which is the total internal energy will be equal to 3 NART divided by NAT multiplied by T. So you can just go through this equation. Make a note of this extra T in 3 NART into T, this T. I hope it is clear. So on simplification, what remains is 3 RT. So we have derived an expression for internal energy of 1 mole of particles of a solid and it is equal to 3 RT. This is the first part of the derivation of C, the molar specific heat capacity of solid is equal to 3R. We have derived an expression which shows the relationship between internal energy of 1 mole of solid substance and universal gas constant capital R, the total internal energy U for a system containing 1 mole of solid substance is 3RT. What will be delta U? Delta U will be equal to 3R delta T. R cannot change. It is a constant. It is temperature that can change. So, we have this expression. Molar specific heat capacity Cm is related to heat capacity capital S by the relation Cm is equal to S by mu where mu is the number of moles. Heat capacity S is equal to delta Q by delta T. Substituting for S in this equation, we will get molar specific heat capacity is equal to delta Q by delta T into 1 by mu. I hope it is clear. We are considering molar specific heat capacity. Therefore, number of moles is equal to 1. Then this expression becomes molar specific heat capacity is equal to delta Q by delta T because 1 by 1 becomes equal to 1. This is equation 2. We already have the thermodynamic equation. Delta Q is equal to delta U plus P delta V. Delta V is negligible for a solid. It is approximately equal to 0. So, P delta V will become 0. So, that equation becomes delta Q is equal to delta U for a solid. Substituting for delta Q in equation 2. This is equation 2. Instead of delta Q, we can write delta U. The equation becomes delta U divided by delta T. That is equation 3. Substituting equation 1. This is equation 1. In equation 3, we get molar specific heat capacity is equal to 3 R delta T divided by delta T. So what happens here? This T and this T will get cancelled. So what remains? We get the expression molar specific heat capacity for a solid is equal to 3R. R is universal gas constant. What is the significance of this expression? This suggests that the molar specific heat capacity for any solid is the same. It is a constant. It is independent of temperature. Later on, when experiments were conducted, more or less similar values were obtained. But for the case of carbon, which is an exception. I hope this video was of great use to you. And if you think it was useful, do like the video, share the video with your friends who may also be benefited. And also subscribe my channel if you have not yet subscribed it. Also press the bell button and also the all button so that you get intimated as soon as new videos are posted. Thank you very much. We will meet in the next video with another useful topic like this. Till then, bye. Take care.